What's up and welcome back to Rumor Has It Official. Let's get straight into talking about 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. This is season four, episode 14, part one. Again, this is part one of season four, episode 14. Let's start off with Stephanie and Erica. So Stephanie is finally leaving Australia. And in this scene, we see her packing her things up. She says that her last few days there didn't end up the way that she had hoped it would, adding her and Erica have not spoken at all to one another since their last meetup. She says that she's sad and disappointed and still has love for Erica. Now on the way to the airport, the producer wants to know what will she tell her mom about her experience once she gets home? And Stephanie says, since her mom doesn't know about her and Erica being more than friends, then she'll just do like she always does, bottle things up. Stephanie acts like she's crying by putting on this fake cryy voice. It's like a little, you know, without any of the tears falling down her face, saying that she wishes Erica was there to see her off. Comment down below your thoughts if you want to, but let's go ahead and move on to Lisa and Usman. So they waste no time getting straight into these two bickering again. Baby girl Lisa is always unhappy, always complaining, and always fussing at Usman. This time she's fussing because he has yet to propose to her in person like she's demanding and expecting him to do. Usman tells her that he doesn't have to propose to her. And how does she expect him to when they have all these problems? And being that they have all these problems, he doesn't even know if they're getting married or not. Lisa does what she does best and says that she's out and she's done. So she takes off and leaves out of the hotel room. Usman says he had planned to propose the night before, but Lisa got so angry about the woman she found that he had been talking to on Messenger. He felt it wasn't the right time after that big heated argument to then propose to her. Now, in this scene, Lisa and Usman are supposed to be getting married in one day. So you tell me, Why is this nutcase tripping about a proposal when they're getting married in 24 hours? If she was going to choose to fuss about it, why didn't she do that as soon as they got that blessing from his mother? When Lisa realizes Usman is not chasing after her tail this time, she returns back to the hotel room calling his name through the door. Lisa tells the camera crew during her confessional that she doesn't care what their problems are. He should have proposed by now. Once Usman steps out to talk to Lisa, she tells him by him waiting the day before, people are going to say that he only proposed because either she's pregnant or because he just wants the green card. I want to laugh so bad right now, but I'm just going to move on. That scene convinced me that these two have a business transaction going on. I think that Lisa's fully aware that Usman is only marrying her for the green card, and she is using that to her advantage to control and benefit from being with a young man. Like, come on, Lisa, why would you think that people would really believe that he's marrying you to get you pregnant? I mean, is that even possible at this stage in your life? Usman says that he believes Lisa loves him even though they fight all the time. So soon after they talk through their mess and Lisa goes into the bathroom and pretends to be finding Usman's hairbrush and when she comes out he's on one knee. Lisa gets her proposal and is like what? So he's on his knee he's like Lisa and she's like what? Like who does that? Who talks like that? A man gets on his knee and you respond, what? Like, what do you want? Do you want this proposal or not? Usman says, will you marry me, Lisa, with peace and happiness? Usman, bruh, I hate to break it to you, but it's not happening. You're marrying stress, control, and turmoil. (laughs) 
I don't know why you think you're going to get peace and happiness. You haven't got it thus far. So going into the marriage, you definitely not getting it. So anywho, Grandma Lisa says yes to the proposal. Lisa cries saying that the proposal touched her and it's something that she will remember to the day she dies. She whispers to Usman as she hugs him saying, you are my life. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Let's move on to Avery and Ash. So in this scene, it's Avery's last day with Ash before she goes back to Seattle. And she says that she has a lot of mixed emotions. She describes her visit with Ash relationship boot camp. Because of all of the challenges, she says that she is unsure what the future holds. Avery and Ash discuss that it may be five years down the road before they can even be together. Ash claims that he's been committed to Avery since the very beginning, adding that he knows that he's going to marry Avery and that he's going to propose, but he feels like right now isn't the time or the most ideal way to do it. That's manipulation. Men that dangle bait or tell you what you want to hear, but don't quite fully give you all of them, to me, that's their way of keeping you on a string, giving you just enough to keep you hanging on. Avery says that she thinks that it's important for Ash to come to Seattle and spend time with her and her family. Avery thought that after this trip, she would have been engaged to Ash, but she now realizes that they still have a lot to work through. She says that she feels good knowing that they're both on the same page. So Ash is already trying to get a tourist visa, but has to apply for an Australian passport first. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Let's move on to Ed. So Ed says that his adventure to be with Rose is over since she broke up with him. He finally landed in San Diego and says that he doesn't want to tell people what happened because he feels that he is a failure. Waiting at the airport to welcome him back home is his mom and Teddy, the dog. As soon as he sees his mom, he says, what a trip. He goes on to say that it was fun, exciting, and crazy. He tells his mom that there's no more Rose. His mom says that it makes her feel sad that things didn't work out, but there was a lot of doubts in her mind and she feels that her son set his hopes up way too high. Once they get in the car, he tells his mom that Rose didn't want to talk about her past and that she broke up with him because she wanted kids. He doesn't tell his mom everything. They never do. Ed says that he hates being single and there's a big part of him that hopes Rose will talk to him again. My thing is with him, if you're going to tell it, tell all of it. And you really need to tell your mom exactly why she broke up with you. Don't use all of these things like, you know, she didn't want to tell me about her past and she wanted kids, but I didn't want like, that's not the reason there were a lot of different events and things that took place that boiled up and the explosion was her breaking up with your tail. It, it's like, it's not just, he's, to me, I feel like he was pinpointing it all on Rose and I don't like that. I feel like a real man should take accountability for the part they played in all of this as well. But really in this case, I really don't feel like she did anything wrong, to be honest. I, I really don't. I don't think that she did anything wrong to Ed. I feel like Ed went into this thing with a big head. He felt like he had this in the bag. He felt like she definitely was going to, because of the lifestyle she lives and maybe she doesn't have as much as maybe he has, he felt like he had one up on this. Like, she's gonna definitely say yes to this proposal. I'm taking her all these places, um, allowing her to experience things that maybe she hasn't experienced before. So, oh yeah, she's gonna say yes. But no, Rose proved him wrong because she showed that she knows her worth and I feel like he's embarrassed. And that's why he did say he feels like a failure. Um, because he's embarrassed. So of course, I didn't expect him to be very honest and open with his mom and tell his mom the real reasons, the things that he was saying, nasty things he was saying about her, how he mistreated her 
on this trip. He didn't tell her all that. So I really need to hear your thoughts on 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. This is part one of season four, episode 14. Comment down below your thoughts on this recap. Give this video a big thumbs up. Share it with a friend who also loves watching 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified on the next time that I make an upload. So thank you once again for all of your positive feedback and support of this channel. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.